what is going on everybody um finally had some money some extra money and since the guys that have been following me on youtube for a while they know my truck's a two-wheel drive so i got me a uh true track um locker and i'm switching gears to 373s and because um, I have a V6, we have an 8.6 um, differential. So uh, the parts for the previous gen Chevys or GMs, they all pretty much fit. So I got a, I got the True Track, got the 373 gears, a master bearing kit, and uh, I had to build a couple things to um, so I can make things work. Because I don't have a shop press, I don't have uh, quite a few tools that uh, for mechanic stuff. So I had to buy quite a few tools um, to get everything done. And I built me this little box out of uh, four by, I mean a two by six. And this holds my uh, my whole assembly in there, so I can put the gears in there. Um, I put Loctite on this all all these bolts, and I torqued them down to 65 foot pounds. And uh, I put the new bearings in there, and they they sit a little lower than the than the than the posse. So I had to get um some um what do you call these things? Where are they at? Right here, some punch pin punch, and I punched it down. Yeah, it only lit it just a little bit more. So um so I did that, punched them in both top and bottom ones. So now they're sitting flush. And then I built me this this little box right here so I can set it in there and uh hammer in the 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 gears because when you put them on it doesn't sit flush. So you got to push it in. Usually people you say press, but I don't have a press and I'm not going to spend money on one. So I had to um, do it in there, put it in there, then just hit it up. So let me show you guys what it pretty much looked like. Let me pause this real quick. So that's pretty much what it looks like when it's on there. And uh, you can put it backwards. Luckily I have um, rubber mats on my floor and they're probably like half inch thick and they're really like thick plastic, uh, I mean rubber. So. I wasn't damaging the parts or anything and then um, to torque them down it's kind of a pain in the ass you need another person unless you have some vice so you can set it on the table and hold it in place so this box also helped but I have another picture of the way I did it um, but I did them before I built the box so but I can show you right now let me turn this thing around and I'll show you how you can set it up this box measures five and a half the smaller pieces are five and a half inches and then these pieces are eight and a half uh, and yeah three inches bigger because they got to overlap this side and that side and that's just enough space for the for the whole assembly on the bottom to fit in there so let me sh flip it around and I could show you guys how you can torque it down all right so you can stand it up like this have a friend hold it in place it doesn't really move but you need a lot of force to torque it down to 65 so have a friend hold it in place and you torque it down and remember their reverse thread so make sure if you have a torque wrench um, that it torques also for reverse and you just have them hold it down torque it down in place and it works and then right now I'm working on a uh, on building a um, a setup bearing because I have to take it off and on so I can uh, adjust shims and whatnot so I'm working on that right now I'll show you guys how I set it up as well because I don't have a lot of tools I have construction tools um, so that's what I have that's what I'm working with so I'm using this uh, granite bit that we use to cut down holes for our sinks on granite countertops for the faucets and then after I'm done with this, I'm going to tape it up and then I'm going to put sandpaper so I can sand this, uh, the, bearing, the inside of the bearing so it'll be smooth. And then, um, so let me take this thing off and I'll show you how I set it up so I can grind it down. Alright, so on, this, on the bigger part of the, 
of my little box I cut a hole just big enough using uh, this this bit to cut uh, wood and um, it's just big enough for the bottom side of the bearing to fit so it sits in there flush so it just sits in there it doesn't move but you can just hold it when you grind it down and what I'm doing I'm just grinding it down putting it in there grinding all the inside diameter just to uh, just so it'll be smooth enough to go through here and then since I don't have a press I'm not gonna buy a press and I gotta press the new bearing once it's all done I got me a piece of a uh, one and a half sketch of 40 PVC and I grind it down the inside diameter same same process I put a I duct tape this so the stickiest part would be to the outside and then I put um tape I put 60 grit tape so I have some of this right here and then um, I grind it down the inside of this and now I'm gonna use this as my bearing presser and it goes in smooth and it's just it's, it's so perfect that it just fits on the inside of the of the bearing so I'm not gonna be damaging the outside of it it fits on there and it's thick enough um, for it to not break so that's how I'm gonna press it down once it's uh once I have everything set up uh, it's gonna be a while though so uh, it's probably gonna take me like two more weeks because I, I don't have time so I'm recording this I'm prepping this up way before time um, just to have it all done so when the time comes but that's pretty much what I'm doing setting this up pretty cool stuff so I'll be back once I start working on the truck Alright, so I grinded the sting down, sanded it down pretty good so it's smoother. And now it slides in and out. So I can uh, shim it up whenever I'm uh, installing it to set the preload. And uh, so you guys can see it comes off and on. No issues. So that's a win in my book. <laughs> 